Little Howie, man, really appreciate you coming on the show, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. You good? All right, yeah, I'm chilling, man. Um, you know, I gotta say, man, uh, consistency is the name of the game, man. You yeah. know, and uh, as an artist, you guys have a lot of jobs to balance. You know, a lot of different things you have to do in order to be successful. So, and one of those things is being consistent. You know, what I'm saying with music or just being on the scene, being in cameos, um, taking you know business and entrepreneur steps, you know what I'm saying, as far as clothing line and even stepping into film, you know, I got to say, man, you really, you, you've done that all, you know what I'm saying, um, but let's talk about, let's talk about where you're from, tell me a little about where you're from. Shit, man, uh, born in Vallejo, but I'm, I'm from Fairfield, though. Oh, okay. I'm from Fairfield, raised out there, you know, I'm a Fairfield nigga. So Bay Area, Bay Area, you know. Yeah, you uh, know, some people don't call it Bay Area, though. Really? Some people say, you know, from like Martinez Bridge up to the Bay Area. But you know, people shit, do I that, really, really especially in the Bay Area. People do that. They're yeah. like, nah, that's not the Bay. Or yeah. I don't know who determines what is what is not the Bay. Yeah. But I thought anything past Sac, anything, once you get oh, to Sacramento, yeah. that's not the Bay no more. That's what I thought. So. Yeah, that's you know what I'm saying. Too. So, um, you know. that's, that's, that's crazy how that happened, but... um. How did how did growing up in the Bay Area affect you? Shit. You know, everybody has their different struggles that they yeah. go through. Some people, you know, live pretty good out here, but some people go through it, man. So shit. how was it for you out like, here? This shit is like man, this shit changed so much. Like once the first the movement hyphy, you know, then the movement is like I'm a dope boy. Right. Then the movement is I'm a pimp. Yeah. Like the movement changes, so it's like just growing up. It's like everywhere, you mm -hmm. know. Everywhere Definitely. they shooting shit. Everybody dying everywhere. It's like the same shit everywhere. Really. Yeah, yeah. To me, I feel like you could go here and you might think it's a suburb, but really niggas is getting smacked out there too. So that is definitely it's true. It's just not broadcasted. Like it's broadcasted. Say something might be broadcasted in Oakland, but it's not broadcasted like in Sac or something. So it might be the same shit going on in Sac, the same shit going on in Oakland. I would definitely say that. I always say it's a hood everywhere. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Definitely. For sure. Yeah, so. so I feel like it's a struggle everywhere, every city. Somebody's struggling in the hood. Everybody got their hood. So, you know. So tell me a little bit about how you got into music. Man, it's like a story behind that shit. Like, my partner, uh, my partner B. Holly, you know, known as Benzo, his uncle had a studio. Mm -hmm. and, um... Oh, his cousin had a studio, and one day we went over there. Shit, I was just playing the game and shit. And nigga, he was uh, he was recording a song. I was playing game. I ain't rapper none of that shit. So then he like, bro, get on this shit. I was like, shit, all right, fuck it. I just freestyled a verse. Right. And then Are you freestyled that, it. Yeah, I just freestyled some shit. You feel me? Like some whack shit. Then I did another one. Like a couple days later, we did another one. Then the nigga around the corner. I stayed around the corner from me, he had lab, and I started going to his shit. And now I just started making hella shit over like hella instrumentals. And then that's why I made my own shit. I had to start building my own studio. Right. It's like probably like in six months, like six months to a year. And I started building my own shit. Damn. So after those first six months, you started to take it serious. I mean, I was you started like, to like, like it. it. Something like, got you interested. Yeah, you know? I was like, man, we ain't doing shit else, but this right. like riding bikes and shit. And like nigga doing hot shit, you yeah. Me? So like, so we was like, fuck all that, and we just gonna start doing rapping. And right, shit. use so the studio like, as an outlet. That's that's yeah. smart. That was really so smart. And uh, already knew how y'all know him as Meezy. Already knew him, and uh, he lived up the street. So then I started going up there. I'm like, bruh, what programs you use? He gave me the programs he used. I took that shit back to the house. I started using that shit. Then that's when I made my like my whole name through the flats like i made a song right and i put measy on it and then that motherfucker it was my first beat i ever made and that motherfucker went up on myspace and then after that <laughs> then everybody knew me in the flats and then then that's how i got into video and all that other shit like after that you know? all right man you so man that's 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 a story you right that, yeah. that's a story you know what i'm saying and, and like then I was still fucking with Meezy. Meezy had his little group and shit. Right. And I was still in middle school. And then uh, then I started doing the videos and shit. So then me and Meezy was at his house. And we was just downloading shit. And we was using Movie Maker. And we said, fuck, no, we can't use that. That's right. whack. So then we used, we got Sony. We got like one of the early versions of Sony Vegas. 
we used that shit. We was learning shit about that shit. And then his uh his brother or his mom had the camera, and we was using that motherfucker. And then uh we shot she get on her knees video. Mm -hmm. that's, that's like another song that took off for me. So then we shot the she she get on her knees video in the in the uh his, in the condos he used to stay in. And then um like after we shot that shit, he shot it. My fact, he shot it and he edited it. Well, we was both right there just editing it, just fucking with it. And then um then we did another one. And he really didn't get into it like that. Like, he didn't really give a fuck about the video shit. He right. was just like, he wasn't really into it. I was into it, so I just got that shit. Then I had like a boosty ass camera, you know, the one with the batteries. And then after that, I just started doing hella videos. And then, like, the school, like, the teachers and shit started niggas seeing that shit. Then they was on me. And then, like, that's what it made the whole school start. Right, you just got a lot of support. Got right. Up, yeah. Then I sampled that young Kurt. And I did that pipe that bitch. And then after that song, no, the other one I did. To give me hit when I did them two samples, cause samples was my thing when I right. make beats. And I started making samples and shit. So made them two samples and that just took off for the parties and shit. So That's how my name got out. You were making beats. I was making beats. You were shooting your own videos. And graphics too. You were doing graphics. How old were you when you when you were doing like all this? Twelve. Twelve years old. We, that's when I started doing music and shit. Right. So I was doing music and shit like twelve, and then like. um and then I got into graphics. I probably got graphics and videos and shit like 13, 14, 13. And then 14, I mastered it. And then that's when I started making hella like shit that people know. So tell me a little bit about how you got your name. Well, shit. My name is Howard. And then like, it was this movie like, it was, it was like Howard the Duck or some shit. And then like, ever since then, it was like one of my homies just started calling me Howie. And then after that, everybody started calling me Howie. Right. And then when I started rapping, I just like threw the little in there. And then, because I was always hella young, so mm -hmm. I just threw the little in there. And then just little Howie. Shit, that's how I really got it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so talk bad. Talk bad. Are you the CEO? Or are you the boss? I own that shit. You own that shit. I own that shit. Man, tell me, how, how'd you build? How'd you build? How did you, how were you able to? Like 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was like I was like tired of like just making little groups and just like and they never working out and right. it just never like went up. Right. Like either some homies went to jail or then some niggas just don't wanna rap no more. Right. And I just did the talk bad. And uh this like when I came out with the song Heather. Mm -hmm. I just did the talk bad shit. I said, now on my shit gonna be called Talk Bad. I was in my room with this nigga named Ree and I was like, uh he trying to come up with some shit. I was trying to come up with some shit. I'm like, bro, I'm gonna do talk bad. Then we used to always kick it at the shop with my nigga fam. That's uh FA five hundred. He 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 did music and shit. Um he had some shit. He was like, alright, I'm gonna call my shit rock solid, bro. He's like, I'm gonna just call my shit rock solid. I'm like, nigga, I ain't gonna lie, I came up with talk bad. I'm gonna just call my shit talk bad. He was feeling that. So then we was like a little movement. Like we got a song on YouTube and it was like me, Bree, mm -hmm. uh, FA five hundred, Sage, his kind of uh spades. Uh, who else? I'm trying to think who else. I think it was like, oh, my nigga Jamon. Yeah, my nigga Jamon too. And I think that was it. And it was like, talk bad, rock solid. And then like, rock solid, like, uh, I don't know. I think he just stopped doing that shit. And like, the talk bad shit, I just kept the shit going. And then my nigga, my nigga had a baby, his girl had a baby. And then my other nigga, something was going on with his mom and shit. So he couldn't really be out here. So then, um, so I was like, fuck it, I'm still going. So then still talk bad shit. So I'm solo now. I'm solo now. My nigga Sage and went up. My nigga FA 500, he was still doing his thing. Right. And other bruh, uh, Sage probably not, I don't really know what happened to him. I ain't never seen him after after that, so I don't really know. But you still pushing, you still, yeah. you, you're a very genuine film and still yeah. doing music, so I mean, you still pushing, man. Yeah, yeah. It's a long time. You know, a lot of artists can't say they've been in the game that long, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're not going to have that to, to, to tie on to their name, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, that's good. so you started your own clothing line. Yeah, branched off from like Talk Bad. Okay. And I just named it Talk Bad. All right, and what made you, you know what I'm saying? What made you like, do that? Because, like, I ain't gonna lie, I still do it. Like, I still invest in like other people's shit and mm -hmm. like buy like designer shit. Yeah. But, like, I was like, I'm spending money on designer shit. I could just invest in myself. It's like I was thinking about like when I first started and I started doing everything myself, so I ain't right. gotta pay nobody else to do right. it. Right. I was like, I could just have my own clothes and just rock my own shit. 
and then like send it to motherfuckers and have them rock it. Well, that's smart of you. Go with them and yeah. have them rock it, and then have everybody else buying it. That's smart, you know what I'm saying? Now, you know, as an artist, you can't be one dimensional, man. Yeah. Just as a human being in general, you yeah. you don't want to put yourself in a category and say, "Oh, I only do this." You know what I'm saying? You need to, man, right. make sure you hustle, push in all directions. So that's dope, you know what I'm saying? That you started your own clothing line. Um, so, do you got any upcoming projects, mixtapes, EPs, or you know, videos, like, anything you you plan shit, on dropping I'm, soon? Right now, I'm just dropping like hella videos mm-hmm. and shit. The summer, not even the summer, I'll probably drop like in a month or some. I'll probably drop a project. I'll probably drop a project. I'm probably gonna drop either the Mr. Elevation project. Yeah, I'm probably gonna drop the Mr. Elevation project because I still ain't dropped it. So that's probably the next project, like April. Like April, I'll drop it. So, you know, right now, it's safe to say that the light is on the Bay Area right now, man. It's back on us, man. And uh, a lot of, a lot of, Different artists have been coming out the bay, you know, with different sounds, not necessarily pertaining to hyphy or kind of like that, you know. Yeah, that was cool. yeah you know, the, the 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 stuff that we're accustomed to, it's not there anymore. You know what I'm saying? It's a different wave, but still safe to say that the light is on the Bay Area right now. So, how do you feel about you know upcoming artists and just you know the music industry right now in general? Shit, well, I'm gonna just start with the Bay. Shit, the Bay like. They got talent, but I don't really like, I don't really know, like, like, it is like everybody's doing their own thing. Right. Everybody has their own lane, and now mm-hmm. everybody got their own style, so that everybody being hypey. Now when you go outside the bay, everybody thinks it's still hypey, so that's why when you say where you're from, just be Pacific, like, when you, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, like, really, like, I think this shit dope. Finally, the bay got some light. I think this shit dope. Uh... Shout out to everybody that's upcoming in the Bay. And then, like, far as the whole industry, I feel like, shit, if niggas stick together, then shit. They're letting people in. I mean, yeah, if you look at the the last 10 years of just music industry yeah. in general, artists don't get signed like that. You can't yeah. you can't go on SoundCloud or, I mean, 10 years ago, there's no SoundCloud, yeah. I don't think. But, um, you know, go on SoundCloud, drop a song on YouTube, and then get signed. Like, yeah. That that was rare. I, it was yeah. it was it's, it was very rare. You you seen the Soldier Boys maybe yeah. or it's, it was it's yeah. rare. You know what I'm saying? But if you look in today's society, you know what I'm saying. I mean, really though, if you got hustle, you don't need to get signed. That's true too. That's if you that's know what you're doing. True. You don't need to. And get that's signed. another that's another thing. A lot of artists are being smart. They're being yeah. independent. They're booking their yeah. own shows. They're keeping their own management. They're you know yeah. they're being in charge. They're learning all these skills, you know what I'm saying, on their own. And that's good too versus taking a label and being under all these contracts and regulations True. that ultimately don't even allow you to be able to be as creative as you were from the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I, I definitely agree with that. You know, and I say that's what that's the hardest part about being an artist. Do you take the deal or do you go I've been around or do you go that independent? Song, right. But they happy though. Like, shit, I've been around a few niggas that signed, but they, they like, they happy. Because, I mean, when you get signed, you got to think about, like, your label, they're going to take care of you. If you Definitely. really, like, a priority, like, they're going to take care of you. Absolutely. Shit. Like, but work that thing. It, 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 it matters exactly. on what you put out and shit. Because, like, like, being around Lil Twist, like, he really, like, he signed. Mm-hmm. But, like, people be like, oh, well, where his music at, he don't pitch it out like that. But like what he doing though, he perfecting his craft. So when he do push it out, people gonna fuck with it. You feel me? Instead yeah. of just putting out hella this, hella shit, it's just That's like quality. Too. It's different ways you can come at it. You know what I'm saying? As yeah. far as being an artist, you can come at it fast. I mean, yeah. dropping all music, or you can take your time. You know, be creative on your projects. And ultimately, yeah. the more time you take on your projects, the more structure, quality music you're gonna yeah. be able to create. You so know just saying? anything out exactly. there. That like, goes for you anything. You might put some yeah. shit out there and then like nobody fuck with it. Exactly. Like nobody. But if you got like you got ten people fucking with it, as long as somebody fucking with it. So you know every artist has a reason, you know, behind their drive and their creativity, you know, for music and you know, being an artist in general. Um, so what is your reason? What is your what what pushes you? What makes you drive and continue, you know, all these years to, you know, do what you do? I at first I wanted the deal. Now like now that I've been around the shit and I understand the shit, I don't want no deal no more. Like 
and now I just do it for the fans. Like, you mm -hmm. feel me? Like, fuck the money because I'm already making that other right. way. So, really, I'm doing it for the fans. Like, they want me to put out music, I'm going to put out music. Like, for whoever like me, I'm going to put the shit out for them. And then whoever don't like me, you feel me? I can still check the shit out, too. But, yeah. Hell, yeah. Um, is there any last comments or shout-outs or, you know, anything you want to say while you're on camera? You know, man, fuck with me, man. Shit, I'm still dropping shit. Uh, I just really started posting shit on SoundCloud, so Lil Howie, SoundCloud backslash Lil Howie. Uh, nigga, my YouTube page, that's where everything gonna be at, regardless, youtube.com backslash Lil Howie TV. My Instagram, Twitter, at I am Lil Howie. Shit, shout out to Squirt Diesel, you feel me? Shout out to Molly Maul, because them niggas is. I ain't gonna lie, they giving me a more networking, so you feel me? Shouts out to them. Shit, you know, shouts out to my team, you know, talk fast. Shouts out to all my niggas, all my bitches, and your bitches, man. <laughs> Call up. You all right? Bitch, I'm fresh off the blade, that's an easy 5K. Every day I make plays, nigga, fuck her all day. I'm not like these other niggas, bitch, I really get paid. How he with a whole knee? Let's get that shit straight. Back to back, all black, s 500 they don't really know me, bitch, came from nothing. I wash your life up on my unborn children. A stump down, hold the only hoe that I'm feeling. Bitch, fuck dance, yeah, I'm trying to see millions. So, bitch, run it up like you trying to beat the children. Bring the donation, keep it in rotation. She telling all her friends like I love elevation. Bitch, check this out, call me Mr. Elevation. These niggas really hot cause they don't know my occupation. Niggas really sick cause they don't know my occupation. Out here staying, give these niggas motivation.